Ukraine is preparing the ground for F-16 strikes on Crimea. This will mean the end of the war. Experts believe that if Ukraine wins somewhere in the war against Ukraine, it will be in the occupied Crimea. At the beginning of the year, President Volodymyr Zelensky made it clear that the fight for this peninsula and the Black Sea would play a central role in the coming months. As Business News writes, Ukraine's success in Crimea would be a serious blow for Russian ruler Vladimir Putin. Russia's defeat in Crimea would not be just a defeat, but a humiliation, said Olga Kovostunova, a fellow at the Eurasian Programme at the Institute for Foreign Policy Research. Over the past few weeks, the Ukrainian military has launched a series of successful attacks on the region, destroying several Russian air defense batteries and hitting the Belbek airfield near Sevastopol. Elina Beketova, an expert on democracy at the Center for European Policy Analysis, noted that these strikes were successful thanks to careful preparation and systematic work, better capabilities for the defense forces, satellite and aerial reconnaissance provided to Ukraine by NATO allies. Although Ukraine lost its navy during the annexation of Crimea, it is successfully destroying the Russian black Black sea fleet using naval drones. This allowed the resumption of grain transportation across the Black Sea and forced the Russians to hide their ships away from the peninsula. Maria Znegova, a senior fellow at the Europe, Russia and Eurasia program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, notes that Crimea is key to Russia's Black Sea access and operations. Crimea makes it possible to direct force to the rest of the Black Sea. Accordingly, containing Russian naval positions in Crimea is critically important for Ukraine the expert explained. Thus, attacks on the peninsula and the enemy fleet are intended to deprive Russian troops of the opportunity to use the peninsula for attacks on mainland Ukraine, as well as to disrupt support for Russian troops in the occupied territories in southern Ukraine. The destruction of the illegally built Crimean bridge could be both a strategic and symbolic victory for Ukraine and a serious blow for Putin. Frederick Mertens, a strategic analyst at the Hague Center for Strategic Studies, believes that by attacking air defenses in Crimea, Ukraine is preparing the ground for future F-16 airstrikes. Crimea is vulnerable. The Russians have relatively limited room for maneuver on the peninsula. Putin has a lot to lose, both politically and militarily. So if a limited number of fighters can have a real impact, it is here and over the Black Sea, which becomes fully available after the air defense in Crimea is dismantled. He added, as you know, Russia has relocated its most advanced air defense system, the S-500, to the peninsula to protect the region from aircraft. Russia cannot afford to lose Crimea. This gives gives Ukraine the opportunity to use Crimea's threatening status as a bargaining chip in future negotiations, Snegova said. At the same time, Beketova is convinced that if Ukraine can regain control of the Black Sea, reclaim the peninsula, and this will mean the end of the war. Former Russian president surprises world with another wild idea. Western countries are main target. Russia intends to create an anti-neo-colonial movement for the freedom of nations and seek compensation from the West for former colonies. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council Dmitry Medvedev wrote about this in the article The Time of the Metropolis is Up in Rossiskaya Gazeta. According to him, the establishment of an anti-colonial Nuremberg will be an important step towards the global north losing its dominant position and forming a multipolar and fair world order. The golden billion will have to scrape the bottom of the barrel in order to pay for the sins of the past, Medvedev emphasized. At the same time, he noted that the payment of compensation to states affected by neo-colonial practices will have to be made on the basis of clear, legally verified and substantiated evidence evidence. Therefore, a clear legal assessment of the activities of former colonial powers will be required. This is what the movement for the freedom of nations will do. It will study the crimes of colonialism that have no statute of limitations and also in cooperation with BRICS and the SCO will begin to implement anti-neocolonial initiatives including seeking reform of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, Medvedev said. Also according to him, the movement will unite the efforts of the countries of the Global South in order to achieve true independence of the territories that are still governed by the UK, US, France and New Zealand. This is necessary to resolve one long-standing but very pressing issue, the completion of the decolonization process that began in the 20th century, Medvedev emphasized.
In June, in Vladivostok, we will take another step towards a new just world. We will hold a founding meeting of the Standing Committee of the Anti-Neocolonial Movement for the Freedom of Nations. And we will discuss practical ways to implement joint initiatives to give our world a fair future. Medvedev concluded. Relatives of mobilized Russian soldiers demand their loved ones return from Ukraine. Relatives of mobilized Russian soldiers campaigning for their loved ones return from Ukraine have called on the authorities to replace these men with the sons of Russian officials and media personalities. We demand to replace our men with other quite specific men, the children and husbands of those who tell our citizens from the screens that war is good. The Put Domoy movement, which has organized women-led protests across the country calling for a full demobilization, wrote on its Telegram channel. We can make a list long enough to replace every mobilized person, the statement said. The list includes the sons of Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, Kremlin loyal TV host Vladimir Solovyev and former president Dmitry Medvedev. Something tells us that such a rotation will quickly put an end to all hostilities, Put Domoy said. Earlier this month, a group of women staged a protest outside the Defense Ministry building in Moscow, demanding the return of those mobilized and a meeting with new Defense Minister Andriy Belousov. Russia mobilized 300,000 reservists for the war in Ukraine in September and October 2022, and many have not returned home since. At least 6,456 of these mobilized men have been killed on the front lines, according to an independent tally conducted by the BBC's Russian service and the independent media zona news website the real number is believed to be higher russia last month labeled put domoy and one of the movement's leaders maria andreeva as foreign agents the women had previously been allowed to stage weekly protests in central moscow with authorities seemingly unwilling to antagonize relatives of men fighting in ukraine